Hello and welcome to Waterdog Photography Tutorials. I'm Brooke Peterson. One of the problems that underwater photographers have is getting rid of backscatter in their images. Um, and a lot of this can be done in post-processing. We have a lot of tools that help us do this. And today I'm going to show you one in Lightroom that you can use to get rid of some unusual types of backscatter. If you look at this image here, you'll see over here on the right hand side, there's a big splotch and it goes right over the top of my subject and kind of ruins the image. Um, and this would otherwise be a pretty good image, except that that splotch has, has wrecked it. And it's a very difficult type of thing to get rid of um, because it's on top of my, of my subject. There's also a little tiny one down here um, that, that does the same thing. It's not quite as drastic, but I can get rid of that as well. So this tool that I'm going to show you, it, it's not a fail-safe for everything. It doesn't, it doesn't work all the time, but it's something that you can try that might help you to reduce that enough to make it an acceptable image, where before you would just toss it in the trash. So I'm going to go to the Develop module, and I'm going to click on the Brush tool. When I open up the, the Brush tool, this panel opens, and you'll see all these sliders here. I'm going to double-click on Effect, and that resets all the sliders to zero before I start working with my image. Um, also, I'm going to work with the flow on my brush. And I like the flow set to less than 20. And that will help um, as I am going over this. I can, I can go over it and over it. And each time that I go over this spot, it layers on top of the one before so that I can control how much this is reduced. Um, and I can do it little by little. Then the size of the brush, you can adjust here with the slider on size, or you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard. Um, and this is what I prefer to use. So the left bracket makes your brush smaller as you, as you click on it. And if you, uh, if you tap the right bracket, it makes your brush bigger. So I want my brush just about uh, this big. And then I want the feather on as well. And I'll have my feather set at 50. And that's just so that um, it, it makes it a little bit easier to control uh, a, a fade out effect. So the way I'm going to get rid of this is with exposure. So I'm going to bring the exposure all the way down. And I can do that because as I use the, the flow, a little bit of flow, it's not going to actually take that down um, four stops. It's just going to take it down a little bit and make the brush a little smaller. And as I go over it, you can see it fading little by little. So this gives me a little bit more control of how much I want to get rid of that spot. OK, that's pretty good. It's mostly gone from there. That's an easier one to do with the exposure because I've got a black background and all I'm doing is just reducing the exposure of that until it doesn't show. But you'll see that it, it came over onto this a little bit and it made a, a little bit darker line right through here. One of the ways I can get rid of that is if I click on the O on my keyboard, or you can also uh, place the hand over the top of this pin, but to, to make it so that you can see it all the time, that shows where I have brushed. And you'll see that some of that brush comes over in, into this area. So I'm going to come down here. I can either click on the Erase, or I can click on the Alt, or, or I believe it's the, uh, uh, the, the uh, on the Mac, I forget what the name of the key is, but um, the Alt key on a, on a PC. And you'll see that turn to a minus sign. Now, when I hold that Alt key down, or the, when I clicked on Erase, my auto mask is checked. And I want it checked because what I will do is I will take out whatever is, is right here without reducing this over here. And auto mask will, whatever you click on first, that color is the color that will erase. But it, you see it didn't erase this black out here, just, just the blue along this edge. So what I've done is reduced any brush that I had that overflowed onto my image. And, and I've just gotten rid of this over here. So I'll click O again. And that turns black. And you can, you can see what I've done. Now, I want to use a new brush to get rid of this. I don't want to use exposure anymore. So I'm going to click on New. And then I'm going to double click Effect to reset all of my sliders. And here, I will probably use some dehaze. So I'm going to set the dehaze all the way over. And since it's quite a bit brighter, I will probably try highlights. Let's bring the highlights all the way down on this. Now, again, I'm going to brush over it. And my flow is, is uh, set to just 16. So 
as I brush, I can control a bit of what's going on here. And that's helping. I want to be careful not to go too far into this area here because I don't want a couple of dark spots on either side. So I'm going to try to just brush here in the middle. I could try making the brush a little bit bigger and then just clicking and let the feather deal with that out there. Um, that helps. There may be some other things I could try. Perhaps I could bring the clarity up a bit. That also seems to help. Um, all these things that I do at this point on this um, edit pin, anything that I do here will, will show. So, uh, for example, if I brought the exposure all the way up, that's going to show. So anything I do with the brush strokes that I've already done will, will show here. I may bring the exposure down just a teeny tiny bit. Um, there's a little bit more here that I'd like to get rid of. There, and that's better. Now, like I said, it's not perfect, but it does help to get rid of uh, that, that big splotch that was there before. Now, I'm going to get one more brush, a new brush, and I'm going to go uh, get rid of this little piece over here. Um, this one's quite a bit smaller. So on this one, I'm, I'm going to try a little bit of exposure. Let's reset the brushes. Let's bring the exposure down. Let's also bring the dehaze all the way up because it is a little hazy. And let's just brush over that a little bit. Oops. There, that's not bad. Now I want to um, not see these edit pins, so I'm going to click on where it says show edit pins. Never. And that, that way they just they get out of my way. Now, if you look at that, there's a little bit, it's too dark right around the top of that spot, and maybe not quite enough here. I would perhaps go over that just a tiny bit more, and then I might, uh, again, go to the, um, the erase and the auto mask and take off, click as so you can see it, and take off some of this across the top. There we go. I took off a little bit too much. You can see the top of the... There we go. Okay, so now you look at this. I'm going to uh, click on the pin so that you can see. So th this um, turn off the brush adjustments just gives you a preview of what it looked like before. So that's what I had before. And now with those adjustments, that's what I've got now. And like I said, it's not a perfect image, but it certainly is a lot more presentable, and I would be able to show this to people as a good image, where if it was like that, I wouldn't be able to show it that way uh, to anybody. So this is a, a little thing that you can try if you like it. Um, maybe it'll work for you, and uh, sometimes on more colorful images, it, it works quite well. Um, it just depends on your image. So uh, it, it's something that you can try, and maybe a little hint that will help you out. If you've liked this tutorial, please go on over to waterdogphotography.com. You can click on tutorials and see other tutorials like this or read them or visit my galleries at waterdogphotography.com. Thank you.